So far we have been talking about binary transmission, binary data transmission, where we transmit either binary 1 or binary 0, and hence we used to have two pulses. One to represent binary 1 and the other pulse to represent binary 0. Sometimes, like in the caller case, it's the same pulse, but we transmit it with positive amplitude to represent binary 1 and negative amplitude to represent binary 0. For example, we used to transmit a pulse like this to represent binary 1 and another pulse like this to represent binary 0. This is what we call binary. And the word by, the word by means double, two, right? Here we are going to discuss like another level of transmission which is called the MF. So here in the binary case, the transmitter and receiver they agree on two pulses. If I transmit this pulse, the receiver is going to understand that this is binary one. If I transmit this pulse, the receiver is going to understand that this is binary zero, right? But what if the transmitter and receiver they agree on four different pulses? So they can, for example, agree that we have four different pulses, something like this. And let's say in the, in the binary case the amplitude was A volt and minus A volt, they can agree here that we are going to use one pulse with A volt, another pulse with 3A volt, minus A volt, minus 3A volt. So if the transmitter and receiver they agree that we have these four different pulses and each time Every time I'm going to transmit one of these pulses. Then they can agree also that if I transmit this pulse to you, then this represents 0, 0. If I transmit this pulse to you, this means 0, 1. If I transmit this pulse to you, this means 1, 0. If I transmit this pulse to you, the receiver should understand that this is or this represents 1, 1. So in this case, each pulse can carry or can represent two binary bits, right? Because we have four different pulses. Every time we transmit one of them, then each pulse can carry or can represent two binary bits. This is what we call four array. So instead of binary, this is called four array communications. And M here, M here equals four. So the number of different pulses is 4. So this is M. M is the number of different pulses that the transmitter and receiver they agree on. And since M equals 4, then the number of bits for each pulse, the number of bits per pulse, which we call here, we will denote as I, it will be 2 bits for each pulse. So here, I is 2 bits per pulse. This is a new definition, this is a new notation, I, 2 bits per pulse. And you should be careful when you deal with I and N. Don't confuse them because many students, they confuse I with N. N is the number of bits per sample that we studied before in the sampling. Uh, and N depends on the number of levels, quantization levels. Depends on L, the number of quantization levels. But here I is the number of bits per pulse. So here, in the case of 4A, you have four different pulses. M equals four and I equals 2 bits per pulse. What if the transmitter and receiver they agree on 8 different pulses? So what if we use M equals 8? This is what we call 8 A. So the transmitter and receiver they agree on 8 different pulses. If you have 8 different pulses, then each pulse can represent or can carry how many bits? 3 bits. That's right. So I here, I here will be 3 bits per pulse. So in general, in general, you can, or the transmitter and receiver, they can agree on M different pulses, and in general, if you have M array, then there will be I bits per pulse, and what is the relation between I and M? What is the relation? If M equals 4, then it can carry 2 bits per pulse, if M equals 8, it can carry 3 bits per pulse, so in general, the relation between I and M is log to the base 2. So we can say that I equals log to the base 2 of M, where M is the number of different pulses that the transmitter and receiver agree on. And I is how many bits that each pulse carries. How many bits? 
that each pulse carried. So this is basically MA. This is basically MA. Now, now, what's the benefit of doing MA? The benefit is instead of transmitting a pulse that carries one bit, we transmit a pulse that carries two bits, right? Or three bits. So we increase the number of bits per pulse, and hence we can for the same pulse rate, for the same for the same pulse rate, number of pulses per second, we increase we increase the bit rate, right? The number of bits per second. Pulse rate is pulses per second, which we used to call what? We used to call RS. We used to denote as RS, the pulse rate. How many pulses per second? We increase the bit rate, which we used to call as RB, bits per second, right? Because now each pulse carries more bits, for the RS will be different from RB. The number of bits per uh, pulse will be more and then the number of bits per second will be more for the same pulse rate. And what's the relation now between the pulse rate and the bit rate? So you are transmitting with a pulse rate RS pulses per second and each pulse carries I bits per pulse. Look at the units, notice the units. This is pulses per second and this is bits per pulse. If you want to obtain RB, which is bits per second, what should you do? You should multiply pulses per second times bits per pulse, you will get bits per second, right? So the relation between the bit rate and the pulse rate now is RB, the bit rate, equals I, how many bits per pulse, each pulse carries how many bits, which is I, multiplied by the pulses, how many pulses per second, right? Even the units, it will help you to uh, reach to this relation. And you can reverse this relation and you say RS equals RB over I, of course. So this is the relation now between the bit rate and the pulse rate. As a special case in the binary case, which we used to study before, in the binary case, this is a special case. In the binary case, M was 2, the number of pulses in agreement between the transmitter and receiver were 2 pulses only. And then I is 1 bit per pulse, right? So in the binary case you transmit, in each pulse it carries only 1 bit. And hence, for the binary case, RB equals RS. This is a special case that we used to deal with before. But now, starting from now on, this is the general relation that the bit rate equals the pulse rate multiplied by I. This is general relation. Also, the bandwidth that we need to transmit. All the calculations that we did for the bandwidth, given the pulse shape that we chose, all the calculations, they depend on how many pulses you transmit per second, not, not on how many bits you transmit per second. It depends on how many pulses you transmit per second. So the bandwidth, in general, and we talked about this in one of the previous videos, well, the bandwidth that we need in general, given a certain uh, pulse shape, is equal to RS divided by 2 multiplied by 1 plus R, where R is the roll of factor. So this is this is the general relation. This is the general relation that you should relation. This is the general relation that you should use at any time. It's correct at any time. Previously, we used to use here RB instead of RS. RS is the same for it. How many pulses per second? Previously, we used to use RB over 2. We used to write the bandwidth as RB over 2 multiplied by 1 plus R. But that was a special case because we used to deal with the binary case where each pulse carries only one bit. So RS was equal to RB. So this was only a special case in the case of
of binary and in the case of binary in the case of binary in the case of binary rb equals rs so you can write the value as rb over 2 multiplied by 1 plus r so this relation can be used only in the binary case which we used to study previously but now from now on from now on the correct relation and the general relation that you should use all the time is rs over 2 multiplied by 1 plus r where rs is what it's not the bit rate it is the pulse rate how many pulses you transmit per second so now let's have an imagination let's have an imagination of what is the benefit of m i will give you i will give you an example of the benefit of m let's compare two systems let's compare a system that is binary to a system that is let's say 16 array and both of them we are going to transmit the same pulse rate so for both of them we are going to transmit the same pulse rate and let's take a simple number 100 kilo pulses per second in both cases so rs is 100 kilo pulses per second for both cases since we are using the same pulse rate and assume the same pulse shape is the same pulse shape for both cases then the bandwidth will be the same bandwidth here will be rs over 2 1 plus r it's the same for both cases so we are using the same bandwidth in both cases but now let's compare the bit rate for the binary case i equals one bit per pulse and then if you calculate the bit rate if you calculate the bit rate you will find that the bit rate equals i multiplied by rs so it will be 100 kilo bits per second while here for the 16 array the 16 array m equals 16 m equals 16 and then i equals what log m log m to the base 2 so it's 4 bits per pulse and hence you can calculate the bit rate as i times rs which will be 4 times 100 will give you 400 kilo bits per second so what we did here when we used m array when we used 16 array what we did here is what we increase the bit rate very much we increase the bit rate by factor of 4 for the same value so we didn't need to bind more bandwidth we didn't need to increase the bandwidth for the same bandwidth we increase the bit rate by a factor of 4 and this is the big advantage of mr here is that you can increase the bit rate by a factor that is log m to the base 2 remember that m m is the num not the number of bits because some people they confuse m with i m is the number of different pulses in agreement between the transmitter and receiver so you don't multiply m here you multiply i which is log m to the base 2 be careful because uh, this is a common mistake the other extreme the other extreme is assume that you don't want to increase the bit rate here we increase the bit rate right assume that another person he doesn't like to increase the bit rate he would like to keep the bit the bit rate the same in both systems so if we would like to keep the bit rate the same let's again compare the same two systems 16 array and binary we have or we want to keep the same bit rate which is uh, let's say 100 kilo bit per second the bit rate is the same here 100 kilo bit per second I here is 1 bit per pulse I here is 4 bits per pulse in this case if you would like to keep the same bit rate in both cases then you can say that rs the pulse rate equals the bit rate over i which will be 100 kilo pulses per second while here rs will be rb over i which will be 100 divided by 4 will be 25 kilo pulses per second and then, if we compare now the bandwidth required 
In both cases, you will find that the bandwidth here is this RS is 100 over 2 multiplied 100K force over 2 multiplied by 1 plus R, while here the bandwidth will be 25K over 2 multiplied by 1 plus R, and then the bandwidth here uh, is smaller, smaller bandwidth because we kept the same bit rate and we reduced the bandwidth. So in these two examples, we saw that we can benefit from M and E in two different ways, in two extreme ways. Either for the same bandwidth, you can increase the bit rate for the same bandwidth, or for the same bit rate, you can reduce the bandwidth. And you can save a lot of money by reducing the bandwidth. So depending on your application, whether you care about the bandwidth or you care about the bit rate, you can choose one of these two extremes. And similar to the differential pulse coded modulation, when we have two extremes to benefit from the uh, from the differential pulse code modulation, here also we have two extremes, and we can combine, we can benefit in something, we can do a mix between these two benefits. We can, for example, reduce the bandwidth a little bit and increase the bit rate a little bit. So these are the two extreme ways, and you can do a mix between them, you can benefit in both ways by uh, combining these two uh, benefits uh, by reducing the bandwidth a little bit and increasing the bit rate a little bit. So these are uh, uh, how we can benefit from the MRE. But the question now is, what's the cost of this? Is that free? Are we obtaining these benefits for free? This is the question that we'll discuss in the next video. See you in the next video.